<laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> We've got a brew day. Oh, man. It's been, I don't even know. I have uh, sold the pub uh, last June. I was brewing like barrels and barrels on a weekly basis and uh, decided to, when I sold that in June, decided to um, brew one batch. I think I brewed uh, the English Pale Ale back in uh, over the winter. So uh, this is the first where we're now at uh, May 22nd, something like that. Cheers, by the way. Not a craft beer, so obviously I've got to get my brew on to get some brews stocked back up. So we are, guys, I'm using the mash and boil over here. Um, it is the original one, doesn't have the recirculating pump. I love it, works great. If I was gonna buy a new one, which ah, I'm gonna buy a new system here soon, just for fun, um, I would get a recirculating pump, um, but you'll see what I do. I just recirculate it by getting uh, getting some water out of there and recirculating back on top, stir it a little more, help get the efficiency up. So we are brewing the more fun blonde. They say blondes have more fun, and I tell you, this beer lives up to its name. Yeah. So, um, what do I got going on? Mash. We're just I've got I've got the uh, uh, strike water in there. I'm taking it up to 162 because I want to mash at 150. So by the time I add the grains, should bring her back down to about 150. We'll try to keep her there. The system does a pretty good job of that. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, how much strike water did I put in? This is make beer easy, man. Um, I've got calculations you can use on my site to tell you how much strike water, um, all the calculations to do all that. I can put the link under this video if you guys want to ask me about it. For me, I keep it real simple. Um, works just fine for me. I put in six gallons of strike water in there. Didn't do any calculations whatsoever. Um, six gallons. And then what I'll do is when the mash is over, I will sparge some, a little rinse sparge on top and bring it up to I want to bring it up let me think about this for a second I want five gallons finished so I want to leave a little in the bottom so I'm gonna probably bring it up to just I, I do with my boil off race about a gallon an hour so I'll bring it back up to just uh, over six gallons um, by sparging down through and you'll see it all in the video and that's it and I just boil her down and uh, do my one hour boil and that's her um, so ingredients i'll put the link to you you can brew the more fun that uh, was a big hit at my pub um it's just a nice blonde ale um it's got a nice little mouth feel to it nice little taste um it's, it's uh it's refreshing light um that type of deal not as light as this crap shite beer that i'm drinking right here but is what it is um so I'll get it once I get I get away with my grains and stuff, so I'll, I'll cover what's in it here when I when I come back. So that's what we got going on. He's a brewing, yes, sir. A red, a red. So we've got we've got the grains ready to go. We got an audience over there too, is my daughter and my dog. We got the grains ready to go. Um, so I had them pre-milled. Always do that um, just for the little batches. Why not? Even even when we were doing fifty. Ordering 50 bag, 50 pound bags, it was three bucks to mill the grains. Like, come on. Um, instead of munching around with a mill mill muncher, um, I like to I like to have them already done up. So, what are we using? Let me take a look at my screen. We're using um, two row. Um, it called for um, let me see eight pounds, which is just under four kgs. So I did four kgs. Um, it called for 11 ounces of American white wheat. I went with um, 12 ounces of wheat malt. Couldn't get the American white wheat, very similar. Um, it called for seven ounces of Kara Red. Couldn't get Kara Red, so I went with Crystal 15. Um, and I'm going, I took it up to eight ounces. I don't know, I took everything up to even numbers, probably because I'm using the old ghetto scale and uh, it's easier to read it at uh, even numbers. So that's what I did. Um, and lastly, it called for dextrin or care pills and it called for five ounces of the bad boy. Getting you guys dizzy up with moving this camera around. Deal with it. And what did I do? Anyways, I used, um, where'd that go? Hmm. Don't know where my care pills went. Anyways, um, 
I used six ounces of it. Um, so modified the recipe slightly, a few different ingredients that are very close, but not a big deal. Um, what you want to do is, if you can't source out the exact ingredients, once you brew them for a while, you just you know what's a simple replacement for you know hops and in in your specialty grains, even base grains. Um, but you can also look, just Google substitution charts online, grain substitution brewing, home brewing, and they list them out for you. Um, so not a big deal. Make beer easy. Keep it simple. Don't sweat it, man. Okay, next steps. We are waiting for the strike water to get up to temp, and when that happens, I'll be uh, doughing in, and we'll see you guys at that time. Until then, having another pour of the shite beer. <laughs> we are mashing in. I have my lovely assistant here, my daughter. Caitlin and we are at 162 to she's gonna stir as I mash that in she's gonna stir it for me we're at 162 and now drop the temperature on the thermometer to 152 because I want to um, keep it at about 150 during the mash itself yeah so that's what we're doing so we're gonna get those in there we're gonna mash for um, an hour um, what I'll do, because I don't have the recirculating pump, I'll show you, is I just get a, a pot, and I kind of recirculate some water from the spigot down below, and uh, back in on top, and then I stir a few times during the mash, um, just to help with the efficiency a bit. Getting pretty thick, is it, Caitlin? So this is, it's getting up close. The, um, the water level is getting up to about seven gallons. Um, so no more than six that I started with for the strike water that you want to put in. Uh, get her all in there. All right, guys. There it is. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Well, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. I don't know what she's laughing at. This is serious beer making times, not time to laugh. Serious. Serious. Stuff. Yeah. All right, see you soon, guys. So, gang, this is how we recirculate without a recirculation pump. Make beer easy, man. Fill it up, dump it in, do that a few times, throw the mash, stir it, and that'll help with your efficiency. Um, I'm also leaving the cover off the mashing bowl for a little while because um, I guess my strike temp was a little too high. 162 did not result. Come and close that thing for me here, would you bring? What? Come and close that nozzle for me. Um, hard to do this with a camera and just turn the blue thing. Other way, other way. There you go. Um, the temperature was too high. Mash temperature right now is about 158 and 150-ish. So I'm leaving the cover off and stirring it a bit. So next time my strike water probably go to like 156, 158, somewhere in there. Um, no big deal though. We're at 159 right now. Stir around time to time. I need a bigger mash paddle than I get. A lot of my stuff is in storage, so I'm kind of making do. Um, but that's it, guys. So we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back probably as I'm doing my sparge. See you soon. I just do a little rinse sparge. So we'll, uh, we'll show you then at that time. Oh, yeah. We guys are at the Vorloff stage. What that means is I'm going to run the liquid. Bri, you want to come back over here and... Turn this nozzle off when I tell you to. I'm gonna run the liquid through um, until it runs clear. Okay, Bree, turn that off. So I'm just using that. I'm just using the pot. I've got my. Uh, I'm draining the the grains down into the uh, into the boil kettle, and I just run this back through. So it's getting all the little particles, all the little grain particles that might have gone through. It's getting them out of the liquid and back into the grain bed. Okay. So I'll continue to do this until this runs clear, okay? And then I'm going to then take um, 170 degree Fahrenheit water and dump it down over the top of the grain bed to uh, do a little bit of a rinse sperm. So I'll show you that too when we're back at that. Go ahead, Bree, turn that off. So she's just turning that off. We're taking this back in the top. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get the uh, liquid coming into the pot looking clear. Fancy. Oh, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> guys, that rat. So, we have um, finished the boil off. Um, the grains have now drained all the liquid down into the kettle. 
Um, I have here a, and I'm, I'm at just under five gallons, so I got to get another gallon of water into this kettle before we hit boil. I've already taken the kettle up. I've cranked up to 1600 watts, and I'm, I'm we're on our way to boil. Okay, so what I do is I just take this 170 degree Fahrenheit water and just dump her down over the top of the grain bed, spreading it evenly as much as reasonably possible. And that's going to get all the remaining uh, sugars and goodness out of the grains and into a brew where I want them. So I'll do that until I get to, um, uh, I want six gallons, maybe a little over, just over, just over six gallons. And then um, we're, we're heading to boil already, so uh, I'll be back for uh, first top edition. See you soon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She's first top edition time, guys. We've got a boil on the go. Uh, hard to see what you see. Boil on the go. Um, first hops on this one is um, 55 minute mark. So five minutes into the boil. So I just use a little hop sack like that, keeping my beer clear, especially this one's a blonde, so I like to keep it clear. I just drop it in and then I will tie it to the edge here and uh, back for the next hop edition, but not sure I'll record it because it's all kind of the same thing. I just add them to the bag and off we go. So I will be back when we go to chill because I am using my good old trusty no chill cube, which is right now filled with um, star sand, nice and sanitized. I'll empty that out and I'll show you how that adventure works when we get to that point. That's it, gang. See you soon. Oh, got a little assistant L over here. Ella, what's up? What's up? What's up? We got some gardeners over there. What's up, gardeners? Woo! Brew day, she just about gone. We're, uh, we, I whirlpooled, so all that, all that all involved is just stirred the crap out of to get a whirlpool going. Brianna, stay out of the way. And other kids trying to get in the, the camera. They want to want to be famous like this the big rock. And then, what I'm doing is this is my no chill cube. So I'm doing no chill cube on this one. What I do is I fill this up with the, the hot boiling wort. I shake it around. I then open the little plug on the back. I release all the air by pushing on it. And then I seal it back up. I leave that overnight. Um, by tomorrow morning, should be down to uh, pitching temperature. And then uh, we're going to put it in the fermenter, pitch the yeast, and we'll be back for the taste test, guys. She's been a heck. Kids are, I would have said the proper word of a brood. See you on the next one. Big Rob. One point five seconds.